FMC puts two concerns ahead of everything else at our plants in the Intermountain West. The first of these is the safety of our employees on the job. And right along with that, the safety of the rest of our environment, our wildlife, our incomparably beautiful mountains and valleys. The water, so precious to our entire ecosystem and so vital to our human needs. If such sentiments are to mean anything, they have to be translated into actions that protect human life and a plant that is the safest engineers, designers and builders can construct. The presentation that follows is about safety in a plant that produces sodium cyanide. This product has been manufactured for decades by other major chemical companies and now by FMC. It's used to get gold out of ore. It's used in practically every plating industry. It's a commodity that will probably be used in industry for decades to come. Sodium cyanide, or NACN, can be handled safely and can be kept out of the environment. But it must be treated with extreme respect because it takes only 50 to 100 milligrams to poison the human body. To prevent your eyes from being damaged in case of exposure to a chemical, you trade your contact lenses for your old original eyeglasses because these can't trap a chemical and hold it against your eyes. Contacts can. Before going to your job at FMC, you take the first steps in preventing exposure to sodium cyanide by wearing the proper clothes, long sleeve shirts or blouses, preferably cotton because it doesn't chafe. Chafed skin is more susceptible to damage from a chemical. To protect yourself against contact with sodium cyanide or chemicals used in the processing, FMC issues outer garments made of PVC, high gauntlet gloves, a hard hat, goggles, steel-toed boots with a PVC or rubber covering, and a face mask to wear over but never in place of the goggles. In addition to these, your job may call for a respirator or even self-contained breathing equipment like the kind scuba divers use. At the end of each day, we collect your work clothes for washing and decontaminating in case a chemical has clung to them without your knowing it. And before you go home, you take a shower so that any chemical that might have found its way to your skin is washed away. The wash water goes down the drain into a special plant collection system never into the general sewer system. Really preventive hygiene at FMC is comfortable clothing, taking care of your eyes, protecting your body from head to toe with PVC outer clothing with boots, goggles, hard hat, gloves and possibly a face mask, putting your work clothes into a collection area for washing and taking a shower before you leave. One more hygiene measure for men is to cut facial hair. Because respirators have to fit skin tight, a man has to be sure that his beard doesn't interfere with a respirator mask. In addition to practicing good hygiene, everyone at FMC needs to learn the basic first aid measures that our emergency response team uses. Sodium cyanide is processed and held in control with caustic soda. The cyanide can poison the body and the caustic soda can cause burns. When someone has become a victim of sodium cyanide exposure, first symptoms are likely to be from caustic burns, which look like sunburn, followed in rapid succession by a variety of other symptoms. Weakness, headache, giddiness, confusion, anxiety, nausea, vertigo, a bitter taste in the mouth, and numbness or constriction in the throat. Breathing is rapid and deep at first, then becomes slow and gasping. The victim may have an irregular heartbeat and the skin may appear pink or red. There is no time to waste, no time to stop and think about all this. The first thing you do when you see someone in this condition is to get the victim away from the source of the poison. This is how life is saved when you're fighting the effects of sodium cyanide. This employee doesn't wait to think it over. 
She sounds off loud and clear. She makes sure someone knows there's a coworker in trouble. And the result is that others hear and respond. Without pausing, the rescuers then begin to pull off the victim's clothing so that the water can reach the skin and flush away the poison. What you're trying to do is get the victim away from the poison and the poison off the victim, followed immediately by the administration of oxygen from a respirator with a face mask. Oxygen is the most critical need because the sodium cyanide destroys the body's ability to use oxygen. The respirator replaces the body's oxygen system for the time being. The next step comes when and if you see signs that the victim is losing consciousness. And that is administering the extremely powerful stimulant, amyl nitrite. Amyl nitrite comes in ampules. Crush one in a piece of cloth and hold it under the victim's nose. Hold it there for 15 seconds, then pause for 15 seconds and do it again. In between times, administer more oxygen. You may have to do both at once. By giving oxygen and holding the amyl nitrite ampule inside the oxygen mask without letting it fall into the victim's mouth, it can be done. If the victim is slow in coming around, repeat the amyl nitrite five times. 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off. If the victim is still unconscious or continuing to slide into unconsciousness, Wait just three minutes and use another ampule in the same rotation with the oxygen. You can do this through three or four ampules. Feel the victim's heart. If you detect it has stopped, you will need to administer cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And that's going to take two hands. Now, let's review. Get the victim under a flood of water to wash off the chemical. There are emergency showers throughout the plant area. Don't wait to remove the victim's contaminated clothes. Pull them off right in the shower. You can give artificial respiration manually to a victim, but you must use the device in the first aid kit that separates your mouth from the victim's if you do. Because it's sometimes necessary to give oxygen steadily to a victim, you can put the ampule inside the oxygen mask, but don't let it fall into the victim's mouth. Wrap the ampule in a piece of cloth before attempting to break it open. Call a doctor, but stay with the victim even while riding in the ambulance until someone can take over resuscitation without interrupting the rhythm. Do not inhale amyl nitrite and never use it near flame. As soon as the victim regains consciousness, remove the ampule. Here is a situation in which the victim keeps saying he's all right when it's known that he has been in contact with sodium cyanide. This is where you can't take no for an answer. The best thing to do is gently force him or her to come with you. If the victim has been hit in the eyes with the chemical, you have to hold the eyes open under flowing water for 15 minutes. Not easy to do, especially for that length of time. But that's exactly what you or somebody has got to do by the clock. Never put ointments or salves into the victim's eyes. Where the affected area is a patch of skin, gently flood the skin area with lukewarm running water for 15 minutes. Get rid of the clothing that could have been contaminated. Ointments and salves must not be used until at least 24 hours have passed. If a victim has somehow swallowed sodium cyanide and is still conscious, give one or two glasses of water and induce vomiting. If vomiting occurs naturally, follow with water, one or two glasses, to rinse the mouth and then to swallow. If the victim is unconscious, you can't give anything by mouth, but you must start the amyl nitrite and oxygen rotation immediately. In all of these cyanide exposure situations, you have been watching first aid, not full medical treatment. Don't allow a delay in calling a physician. You may have your hands full, but someone else can be put to good use telephoning for medical help. 
never assume a victim is all right. A victim is liable to say, I'm all right, and you will have to find a way to make him or her submit to the appropriate first aid. As you saw, an affected eye must be held open in the flow of the emergency eye wash 15 minutes by the clock. As lethal as it sounds, the swallowing of sodium cyanide can be counteracted by fast action and medical help. If the victim is conscious, survival is possible. Seeing a co-worker recover from sodium cyanide exposure is the payoff of fast first aid action. Isn't it worth learning how to do these few basic steps?